first thing out of the gates is just foundational things like hydrating enough. Because if you have a UTI issue, just having constant good water flow and also, you know, with some electrolytes in the water, that can be very helpful. Kind of having an antibacterial effect and just keeping that good water flowing. The solution to pollution is dilution. So that can really help kind of keeping things flushed down. Obviously, being very careful if you're having antibiotics, why did you have the antibiotics? Was it for routine preventative things? Um, was your diet off and your immune system's weak and you got sick and you needed it? Why? Right. So you do want to look at that. And if you've had chronic antibiotic use, you know, what does the bacteria in your gut look like? Because odds are, if your bacteria or yeast imbalances are present in the vaginal tract or the urinary tract, you probably also have issues in the digestive tract. You may have SIBO, you may have bloating, you may have gas. You may have poor digestion, low enzymes, low acids, H. pylori, parasite infections. You may have to look deeper in the intestinal tract and actually work on knocking down some of those microbes, fixing the gut, and then really work on repopulating some of the good bacteria after the fact to really work on fixing the gut. Because you start to fix the gut pH and the gut bacterial milieu, that does help improve IgA levels, and that does help with the immune system in the vaginal area as well. Yeah, well said. So if you're coming in with the UTI, most most of the time, there's going to be more than just a UTI present. There could be, as you mentioned, a, a number of, we have someone coming in and UTI or recurrent UTI is one of their complaints. I can tell you, mm -hmm. you and I are going to want to run a stool panel and we're going to run organic acids because we're going to want to look at the whole microbiome and certain things may get missed on the stool and the urine should fill in the gaps. Like we might find candida on the urine and it got missed in the stool. So stool and urine these are things that your typical doctor and your lab locally is not going to run. They might run a urine panel, but this is not the same urine panel as an organic acids. We're talking something far more advanced, far more comprehensive, whereas the urine panel locally is primarily just going to look for bacteria or maybe leukocytes. As you mentioned, you might get a positive or a trace or something like that, but it's not a detailed description of what's going on. You mentioned several bacteria too, like um, Klebsiella and Prevotella. We can identify these on a stool panel. So that's why it's so important to get the data. And could we just throw a woman on an herbal UT formula? We could, but you know, we we want to do our due diligence. We want to do a good workup on these people too to make sure that we're not just cut straight to the chase and we skip something huge that we would have found on these tests. Right. I mean, a lot of the antibiotics they're going to be used are going to be like Bactrim or any of these kind of um, more – Augmentin is a big one. Bactrim, Augmentin, those are a couple – Definitely be very weary of any of the fluoroquinolone families because they have significant side effects regarding tendon, tendons and ligaments and mitochondria. So be really careful of using fluoroquinolones. Of course, when we work these patients up, we're doing a really good history so we understand how everything came to fruition regarding the UTI, yeast infection, or bacterial vaginosis. We're, we're trying to understand it, right? Obviously, with certain things like yeast infections, BV, like making sure – Things are dry in that area. If you're in a very moist environment, keeping things dry helps. Yeast and mold love a um, very moist environment. So keeping things dry tends to be very helpful. Um, soaping up some of those areas you, be very helpful too that you can use a really nice, um, as long as the, the mucosa is not like really um, ir irritable, you can use a really nice sulfur soap, especially in the outside area. If there's anything yeasty on the outside area, anything internally, there's definitely internal things that we can do. So on the internal side, just getting water in there may be helpful. Using raw cranberry juice, not anything with added sugar, but raw organic cranberries, you know, four ounces at a time with diluted some water is pretty good. You can drink that. That's going to have a nice low pH in it, which helps prevent the bacteria uh, from growing. It also helps with uh, some D-mannose in the cranberries. can also internally do things like um, different berberines can be very helpful, that's excellent. Boric acid is another excellent compound. You got to be careful with these by, by and large by itself because they can be a little bit irritating. So you want some nice things that provide some moisture, whether it's aloe or shea butter. Um, there's different like moisture compounds that can provide the moisture so you don't dry out that tissue as well.